<clears throat> we formally uh, took the uh, memorial to the Lafayette Escadrille into uh, the holdings of the United States government. It will be one of our properties of the American Battle Monuments Commission going forward forever. So we hold the deed to the property now, officially passed to us by the French government. The Lafayette Escadrille were the first American pilots to participate in aerial combat. In a sense, they are the combat foundations of the current United States Air Force. So Raoul Lufberry and Eddie Rickenbacker and the guys who fought in World War I, all very important, but the first of them were American volunteer pilots and uh, in a squadron that belonged to the French Air Force. Then when the U.S. entered the war in uh, 1917, uh, most of these guys transitioned and became uh, the seasoned leadership, the, the uh, you know, the, the job knowledge of how to do aerial fighting was brought into the American uh, Air Service of the, of the U.S. Army at the time. And uh, so th it's very important in, our, in, in the history of the U.S. Air Force, very important in focusing on our combat mission of, con of uh, fighting in the Earth's atmosphere. Well, the monument is right on the outskirts of Paris. So if you're going to drive from Paris to Versailles Palace, for instance, which is a you know, common thing for American tourists to do, you ought to stop halfway at the Lafayette Escadrille Memorial and just look at a bit of American history and now on American property and now being taken care of by the American Battle Monuments Commission. Uh, what are some of the outlooks for the future? Well, we will continue to uh, maintain it going forward forever. It's ours in perpetuity. Like all the American cemeteries, we have 11 cemeteries here in France, the most famous of which is at Normandy uh, at Omaha Beach, but uh, we have 10 others, very important cemeteries where American soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen from World War I and World War II are buried. So this will uh, be put on the rolls of our property and cared for in exactly the same way that we care for all these other American monuments and cemeteries in France. Uh, it, will, it will get better over the years. Right now, it, uh, you know, it's been run, it was let to run down for 40 or 50 years. And, we had to organize a big recovery project to repair it and bring it you know, up to modern standards. Uh, that was done with private donations that we raised in the United States and here in France. But going forward, it will be part of the routine maintenance and project planning for all of our other uh, cemeteries and monuments, not just in France, but all over the world. Well, I uh, served 11 years in Europe during my career. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time over here in various NATO assignments and national assignments. So uh, the question you ask, I think, is a very good one. Focus not just so much on American tourists, but American service men and women and their families stationed here in Europe ought to go see this Lafayette Escadrille Memorial because it's uh, very important in the history of combat aviation. And it's just a nice place to go if you want to have a picnic or whatever, and the weather's good. Uh, take a look at it. And it's very convenient right here in Paris. So uh, I think it would repay uh, anyone uh, a, you know, a dividend to go take a look at it. Or 
unfair, or we would talk about uh, the, the story with the community value of the Lockheed Escadrille in the, the squadron, but in fact, um, there was no room for them at that time. So these men that were not all there, there's some on the other yeah. side, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we're actually okay. over there. At that volunteered to fly for the Lafayette Escadrille had their reasons for joining. Many of them had strong ties to France. And for, for um, a Norman Prince, France was kind of his second home. Um, he, his father was actually very opposed to him, um, uh, accolades that the father wanted to bestow. For example, the idea that Norman Prince was the only person who had a pilot's license at the time when the behind, us, behind the walls in here are actually in the order of their date of enlistment. Cenotaphs have been redone with the cenotaphs. Um, that's probably neither here nor there. Those were removed from the Lafayette Escadrille Memorial now. Yeah. It's about the very end of the Germans started to get a little bit edgy. The Americans had signed a non aggression pact that settles on the Lafayette Escadrille. The symbolism on both ends, uh, you notice that. Uh, sorry, um, <laughs> and it's, 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 it's said that everything that you learn is really useful. We learn to learn with a lot of these kinds of. Um, so very housing after a day of out uh, of, of sorties. Wow. Until in nineteen tell that story and interpret that. You know the thing that I can think of. Cabinus is over here, Rob D'Alessandro. Uh, Why is everyone standing so far? <laughs> yeah, that's the way I always feel. Yes. 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 It's on the half of the foundation. Two warrior head that is painted on the side of the uh, Newport airplane, and that's the symbol that became, of course, the symbol for the Lafayette Escadrille. Um, and very quickly, that was buffed out of the back and the front engraved. To keep this uh, as a, a reminder of our cooperation and uh, all of the support. That, uh... <laughs> and, and before I turn the, the mic over to the general for uh, his comments, uh, I'd simply like to thank. Okay.